Hey there, welcome back to day five, or welcome back for day five, I should say, of the March Facebook Live event in which we are talking about organizing, decluttering, tips, tricks, strategies for getting motivated, um, and to just get inspired to get organized. I'm Shannon Graham Cornell of Better Home Organizing at betterhomeorganizing.com. And I'm thrilled to be with you here today as we continue to discuss Gretchen Rubin's Four Tendencies Framework and how we can use that as some insight into ourselves and others as we try to get organized. So today we are talking about questioners. And yesterday we talked about upholders. Uh, but we're moving on today to questioners. So before we get started doing that, however, I do want to just do a super quick recap of the Four Tendencies Framework. If you need more information about the framework itself, check out day three, because that's where I did a deeper dive into all of the tendencies and more in depth about how the framework works. But for our purposes today, I'm just going to do a super quick recap. So as we've talked about before, the four tendencies framework is intended to, to zoom in on a very narrow aspect of our personality, which is how do we respond to internal and external expectations that we either place on ourselves or others place on us. And the four tendencies that are part of this framework are as follows. It's the upholder, and that tendency responds very well to inner and external expectations alike. The obliger, who really struggles with internal expectations, but does really well at meeting external expectations. The rebel, who doesn't like either kind, they don't want to, res they don't respond well to either things that, uh, expectations that others have of them or expectations they have of themselves. And then the one we're going to be discussing today is the questioner. And the questioner is someone who runs all expectations through their internal filter to decide whether the expectation makes any sense. So essentially, they turn all expectations into an internal expectation. So does it make sense? Is it efficient? Is it arbitrary? Because if it is, then there, it doesn't appeal to them. So we're gonna be talking about them today as we're talking about different strategies we can use to motivate ourselves if we're a questioner, or if we have a questioner in our lives that we are wanting to get their assistance with or an organizing project. What can we tap into about their tendency that may help motivate them to, to join us in, in doing uh, our project? So I wanna start off with actually one that we talked about yesterday when we were talking about upholders, which is the strategy of clarity. So when I discussed clarity yesterday, I was talking about it from the perspective of getting very clear on what your goals are and very specific about what it is you want to achieve, that that really appeals to an upholder. The strategy is the same for a questioner, except the rationale is different for why it works than for the upholder. For in, in the case of a questioner, what you want to be really clear on for yourself, if, if you are the questioner, is your reason why. Not necessarily, although it's important to know what it is you're wanting to do, but for a questioner, knowing the reason why why this makes sense to do, what's my benefit, why should I do this in the first place? That is what a questioner needs to be super clear about because that way the questioner can then take this clarity of the reason why or clarity around their reason why and internalize that and make that project into an internal expectation that meets their measure, meets their standard of reasonable, and is then much more motivated to try to achieve that. So knowing your reason why. If you are not a questioner, but your partner is and you need their help, or your child is and you need their help, 
in executing the organizing project because you should only be organizing your own things. If you are organizing someone else's things, you need to have them working with you. So if that person is a questioner, just start right in with the why. Just start there, because they'll ask you. One of the things about questioners, as the title of the tendency suggests, they love to ask questions. So just start with the why. So rather than, can you help me organize the garage tomorrow? Say, can you help me organize the garage tomorrow? Because if we are able to organize the garage, then we're gonna be able to park both cars in the garage and we have a winter storm coming. Even though it's supposed to be spring, we have a winter storm coming. And this way we'll be able to park both cars in the garage. And I know you don't like it when the cars are exposed to the winter weather, so this will solve that problem. Especially if the benefit of it is something that um, is meaningful to them, not just I want to get the garage organized because it makes me uncomfortable that I can't find anything. Figure out what is the benefit to them and that will make the reason why even more compelling. Another thing about questioners, questioners love to be as efficient as possible. They want to do everything in the most efficient way and so if you are a questioner, tap into that. Rather than thinking about I have a project where I want to get organized. Think about, I have a project where I want to get efficient. Challenge yourself to come up with the most efficient way to organize your kitchen or to organize your garage. And let your love of efficiency guide you in creating your physical space around you. So tap into that love for efficiency and you'll be, you'll be good to go. Make that a challenge. Again, if you are working with someone who is a questioner, tap into their ability to come up with the most efficient way to do something. Call out the fact that your kitchen is really inefficient. Not that it's disorganized, that it's inefficient. And I'd really love to be able to figure out the most efficient way to do this. Can you help me come up with a really efficient way to organize our garage, our kitchen, our bedroom, whatever it might be? Uh, so tap into that ability of them to be efficient, call out the inefficiency, and then if you can throw in the benefit, it's inefficient and it's going to benefit you by becoming more efficient by fill in the blank, then you've got the winning ticket to get them motivated to help you in achieving that organization, but we're not calling it organization, we're going to call it efficiency. Another thing about questioners is questioners love research. Remember, they are driven by what, does this make sense? Does it make sense for me to do this? So one of the ways that they can feel good about the answer to that question being yes, is that they've done some research. They are big on evidence, on proof, on uh, proven solutions. They may rely on experts. Um, as well as their own experience. Their own experience is really important, but experts are a good place to start. So if you are a, a questioner and you are trying to get organized, do some research on great ways to organize your space. Look to see, you know, in books or on the internet, look to see what are some experts saying about the best way to organize whatever space it is you're trying to get organized. Do that research. The other thing that questioners love to do is once they've done the research, they also love to customize or tweak to fit them what they've, um, what they've discovered. Uh, it makes it even more compelling for them if they're able to make some changes to it to better suit them. So do that, you know, do that research, do that tweaking. One thing that you want to be careful of, however, is that the questioner tendency is the tendency that is most likely to suffer from analysis paralysis. As a questioner, you can get so um, mired in your research that you never stop researching and you and start doing the project. So if that's a tendency that you have, if that's a challenge for you, give yourself a deadline. Maybe it's the certain number, a certain number of days that you are conducting your research. Or maybe it's a certain number of experts that you'll want to get suggestions from. And then cut yourself off. So it's 
I'm giving my I'm giving myself two days for research and the third day I'm gonna start in on that garage so think about that as you're you know as you're you're working on doing your research don't get too bogged down in doing it but let it inspire you if you have a questioner that you're trying to get to come along with you if especially if you've already done that research or do a little bit of research and let them know you've done your research already you've actually thought through this but then you can call on their their inclination to customize and tweak say you know i read three articles on how to organize the kitchen and the one i liked best was this article by so and so but i'm not really sure it's 100 percent perfect for us so what do you think you know, how could we tweak this to make it really suit us? And that will definitely pique the interest of a questioner. The other thing too, and this is a really good uh, protection against this analysis paralysis idea, is questioners uh, very often don't want to be hemmed in and felt, feel like something is permanent. They like to experiment. So it's a good protection against analysis paralysis if you think about, you know what, what I'm gonna do isn't permanent. This isn't a permanent choice I'm making. This is, and this is an experiment. We're gonna try it, we're gonna see if it works, see if I like it, and then that also gives me the ability to tweak. So going back to the tweaking and customizing, which is something that really is inspirational for questioners, uh, you know, think about treating this as just a test, an experiment. I will say, if you are doing that and you're using that to motivate yourself, I always tell people, don't buy products until you're done with the decluttering and figuring out what it is you use before you go buy things to help organize. Um, it's especially true if you're treating this whole thing as an experiment. Because once you've bought 10 baskets and three shelf risers and four little inserts, you're gonna feel very hemmed in by that. So definitely don't buy products until this experiment is a success and now you're ready to make it a little more permanent. So again, consider it an experiment. And you can try that same logic with your questioner that you're trying to get to come on board. Hey, we're gonna try this. I don't know if it'll work, but let's give it a shot. We can either, if it doesn't work out like we wanted to, we could tweak it or we can just stop altogether. But, you know, let's let's give it a shot. Let's try it. So those are some ideas for if you are a questioner or if you have a questioner in your life and you are wanting their assistance in an organizing project. Those are some su suggestions for things that you could try uh, to to either manage yourself or to inspire someone to come along with you. So. Next time, we're gonna be talking about the obliger tendency. And I will guarantee you that you are either an obliger or you have one in your life because the obliger is the largest tendency. It's the most common tendency of the four tendencies. So this will be a good one for uh, either yourself or for, um, for someone in your life. And Obligers are fascinating. They're, it's a really cool tendency, and they've got some really neat, um, neat uh, uh, quirks, I guess, is a characteristics. Characteristics is a better way of putting it. So definitely join in tomorrow to hear about obligers, and then we'll finish up the next day talking about rebels. And at that point, then we'll be done looking at how to inspire based on Gretchen Rubin's four tendency framework. So. That's it for today. And when this uh, when this posts, please feel free share with me in the comments. Are you a questioner? Have you tried any of these strategies? Is someone in your life a questioner? And have you tried have you tried these strategies or have they tried them with success in helping get themselves motivated? Are there other strategies that you've tried or that they've tried that you can share? I'd love to hear all about it. So thank you, everyone. Shana Graham Cornell signing off for today, and I hope to see you tomorrow. Have a great day, everyone, and happy organizing.